Welcome to the early November edition of Paleo Rewind 2021. We start by winding the clock back to the Ordovician extinction event around 445 million years ago. This was the first of the so-called Big Five extinction events, and it resulted in 85% of all life on Earth being wiped out. At the start of November, an international team of scientists published their investigation into the causes of this ecological disaster. Through geochemical testing and computer modelling, the study examined the environmental conditions before, during and after the extinction. Their findings suggested that deep ocean environments saw a decline in oxygen saturation, while shallow water environments like reefs and coastlines remained well oxygenated. One explanation could be a global decline in temperature, disrupting ocean currents and preventing oxygen from being circulated into deep water. The ocean is a deeply interconnected environment, so when one area suffers, it often has a knock-on effect elsewhere. It's still not 100% clear what caused this global cooling event, but this discovery is an important piece of the puzzle and opens up a new chapter in figuring out this ancient mystery. Moving up the timeline to the late Triassic of 220 million years ago, we have the announcement of a new plateosaurid dinosaur from the frozen cliffs of Greenland. Plateosaurs were an early branch of the sauropod line of the dinosaur family tree, which would later go on to produce giants such as Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus, and Dreadnoughtus. This new dinosaur was actually first uncovered in 1991, with many other fossils being found in the years that followed. They were believed to belong to a species of Plateosaurus, a dinosaur known from European fossil sites. But this year, two near-complete skulls underwent rigorous scanning and assessment, and a paper published by Victor Beccari as a master's thesis, no less, announced that this was an entirely new creature, E.C. Sarnak. This is the most northern discovery of a Triassic sauropodomorph to date, and is also the first instance of an entirely unique dinosaur genus being found in Greenland. On top of this, EC appears to show anatomical similarities to plateosaur fossils found in South America. This has greatly expanded the known range of this family, and opens new avenues of investigation into their evolution and distribution. A little closer to home now, a discovery from the Isle of Wight off the South British coast. A former GP turned paleontologist, Jeremy Lockwood, had spent years cataloguing fossils from the island. When the world got shut down during the year of which we do not speak, he spent his newly acquired downtime piecing together a dinosaur specimen that had been locked away in storage since 1978. Long believed to be an Iguanodon or Mantellosaurus, it turned out this fossil had expanded nasal bones, which those other dinosaurs don't possess. Wouldn't you know it, it was a new species, Brystonius simmonsi. Considering how many fossils of this type tend to get lumped into either Iguanodon or Mantellosaurus, Brystonius' distinctive snout has implied a far greater diversity in European ornithopods than previously believed, as well as some very unflattering headlines. Hopefully this reclassification means more specimens in deep storage can get the attention they deserve so their full story can be told. And finally, we come to the Ice Age, with the ongoing debate on the extinction of the woolly mammoth. Whether it was climate change or human hunting has been a hot-button issue for a good long while, and a research team led by scientists from Denmark and Australia hopes to shed some light on it. By using fossils and DNA samples, the project assessed mammoth distribution and genetic diversity to understand where, when, and how their populations declined. Widespread climate change caused the mammoth's ideal habitat of dry, open tundra to shrink, and this certainly caused a great reduction in their numbers, but maybe not enough to have totally wipe them out. The results of this study suggest that hunting by humans for meat, fur and ivory could have accelerated their decline by as much as 4,000 years. This in combination with rapid climate change would have been too much for the mammoth population to compete with and they eventually became extinct around 4,000 years ago. This whole study asks us to reject the idea that human hunting was a kind of finishing blow to an already dwindling species, something which I've been guilty of myself. Instead, consider that independent of one another, hunting or climate change might not have taken them down, but that they were both integral factors in the mammoth's extinction. That destructive human activity on a large scale, combined with massive changes in global climate, are just too much for natural selection to keep up with. That maybe there's a little something to learn from this. Thank you for your time, I hope you've all had fun and learned something, and please enjoy the rest of Paleo Rewind 2021.